We're here uh, with Big George Lehman. We flew him in from his little uh, dungeon. <laughs> um, I just have a few questions for him. Number one is, uh, can you show us where you wear your belt when you do a deadlift? Because I get questions about this all the time, and I'm not you, and I, I've never heard an answer to it. So, so I'll have you actually answer the question on like where you wear it and why? All right. Um, I did not come up with it. Um, Love the guy, can't pronounce his name, KK940, whatever. Right. Um, saw him doing it originally. Uh, I wear it a little bit higher in the front than in the back, and I basically wear it right under my sternum, right about there, something like that. And if you notice, this kind of supports like my natural like locked out position. You know what I mean? Like it kind of lets you get your shoulders back pretty easily, versus when I wear it down here. Kind of a little hard to explain, but it actually kind of fights me when I try and lock back out into it. Like if you notice, right now my back is straight. The belt is straight with my back. When I actually come back, my back right. flexes into the belt. Uh, when it's when the belt is up here more, does it feel like it's supporting your erectors a little bit more too? Like this might be the area where you would round a little bit. Yes, um, it's so you right. You got to push into the belt almost. Yeah, it's it's right in the middle of the uh, of the weak area for me. Well, I I tend to think it's everyone's weak area. You know, the middle of a stick is where it's going to break, right? right. So I, I wear it right about in the center, a little bit higher in the front than in the back. And this lets me really nicely compact, I'll show you from the side here, you can compact your stomach into your upper thigh. That's basically my main key for strength off the floor. And deadlifts is being able to, I do a lot of exercises for abs, I always have. I used to read a lot of articles and everyone said it was really important. Right. It was, you know what I mean? Right. Um, so now I have this, which is like essentially like, you know, it's about as hard as like a watermelon kind there of thing. Yeah, ready? That's pretty, pretty yeah. damn solid. Yeah, I can like, yeah, I can like crush people with it and shit. Um, but What's that's, uh, some of this other attire we got over here? Um, what are these, uh, tell me about these wrestling shoes. What do you wear those for? I like high tops versus like slippers and stuff like that. I feel like I just get a little bit more ankle support. Um, you know when you like squat in a high top shoe, it kind of keeps your knees from coming forwards as right. far. I feel like I get a little bit of a spring out of it. And the wrestling shoe itself gets really, really good grip on the floor. You crank them on, you tie them up fairly tight. Pretty tight, okay. pretty tight. And then what about uh, the singlet? You like to normal, a lot of times, a lot of the videos I see you're in a singlet. Um, on top of just me looking like my biggest and strongest in that, which for me, super helpful. Um, I don't understand how people can go in the gym and not try and look big and strong if you're going right. to do big and strong shit. Um, but it, it stretches a little bit. Like when yeah, I put the looks, straps up. It looks pretty small to me. <laughs> Look at, compared to me, right? He's tiny. Uh, 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 the ink. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the, it stretches a little bit. It helps the tiniest bit. 5% placebo, whatever. Yeah, and then plus it's what we're asked to wear in competition, so you might as well get comfortable with it, get used to it. Might as well, right? And then what about the lifting straps? You know, some people, you know, say, hey, you know, throw on some lifting straps, overload. Other people say it's cheating. You know, where, where do you lie with it? Um, well, I guess if you, like, snuck them into competition somehow and no one saw it, it'd be cheating. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> right. But like anything you do in the gym isn't cheating. It's just you know in the gym, yeah. Yeah, it's just what you're doing. Um, I use hook grip, obviously. For those of you that don't know about hook grip, once you learn how to do it and if you can kind of deal with it, you don't really lose your grip. It just hurts. Um, so I can train with straps and I can still pull heavy assuming that I'm like practicing the technique. And I would much rather not limit like my back and leg strength from my grip. Because my grip is weak, and actually something I found out about, I broke both my hands at some point punching things. Boxers <laughs> fractures. Right. So when I close my, my fists, my pinkies come like inwards. And that really screws up my grip. How many people do you think you've killed over the years? Three, four? I mean, I don't want to get into numbers. Okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say less than ten, more than five. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I just have like a generally kind of a weak grip. Because of that, I think, honestly, I really think that's what it is. I talked to someone about it. If you think about it, your pinky is kind of an important one. Yeah. I mean, if you don't have that, you're not really holding on to much of shit. So the, the straps basically just uh, are allowing you to lift more weight. Let you don't want the limitation to be in mm -hmm. your hands. You want to, you want to yeah. work your back as much as possible. And so what's your best uh, in competition versus your best with straps? Um, I guess in competition, I've lifted my heaviest ever. did 909 hook grip. Um, with straps, I did 907 for reps. 
Well, I mean, if I would have had Strap Song with 909, possibly could have done that for reps. Right. Um, simply because I can just do a lot of reps with anything I can pick up for some yeah. reason. Strength what, first what power, What is the right? deal when you do your reps? I think this is one of the things that uh, people really enjoy about watching your videos and they're inspired and motivated and fired up. When they see you come to the top of your deadlift, you'll hold it up there for a little while, usually the first rep, and it's like, okay, the guy just picked up fucking 900 pounds. Most likely, this is the end of the video. He's probably just going to put it back down. But then you'll proceed to slam out a few more repetitions. Kind of like, uh, what's the mindset there, and, and, why, and what's the point behind the training like that? Um, well, I'm a big believer in building muscle mass to be strong. I mean, you can be strong and not have a lot of muscle mass, but that takes effort. You know, you actually have to try to not weigh a lot to be really strong for your weight. And technique would come into play a lot exactly. if you weren't big, yeah. So I, I think it builds muscle better for me doing reps. I think pretty much most people would agree, you know, instead of one, if you do a few. Um, also, touch and go seems to just work better for me. Imagine if you drop the weight every time you benched it. You know, you just let it free fall and then press yeah. it back up. The negative is important. Um, in my experience, it helps prevent injury for me. Now, I've been hurt doing it as well. Right. Um, but... Being able to load up on the way down versus completely relaxing, doing it again, completely relaxing, doing it again. I'd rather do touch and go. It seems safer. And I don't mess up my form when I do touch and go. Touch and go is always super controlled. I'm more upright on the second and third rep than the first rep. Builds muscle better. I can push myself harder. More reason to make progress, more or less. I did three reps instead of one. Chances are if I'm not hurt, which sometimes I do. Yeah then I probably did better because of that. Um, Deadlift is like a pretty mentally like challenging lift. And so when rep number one comes off the ground somewhat like shit or a little bit slow, uh, most people would give up. Most people would, that would be the end of their set. But I think you're able to push through that. Is that just uh, something that you have forced yourself to do over the years? Or that's just a certain mentality that you have, mindset? Um, well, I always go into the set kind of knowing what I'm going to be able to do. It's like, you know, the, the longer you train, the better an idea you have of what you're able to do. I mean, what other people are able to do around you if you just watch them warm up. So you I kind like of... an intent for the day. Kind yeah, of I have a pretty... idea of where you're going to be. Yeah. Give or take a rep or two. Give real, or take 20 pounds. Yeah, real close. to. I'm pretty much spot on, like, every time. I can pretty much... And that either works if I think I'm going to be weak or if I think I'm going to be strong. Like, it's it's almost up to me like what number I pick is kind of going to be where I'm at that day it's not like if I choose nine I could have got 11 or something like that it's right. if I think about it first it, it kind of becomes my reality for some reason oh, that's cool. um that's yeah good. that's More. a good way of looking at you kind of you you almost have already seen it and so then therefore it's going to happen very much so yeah um very confident before it. I've never um I don't think I've ever maxed going for a weight I didn't think I could do I don't think I've ever um even tried reps with something that I didn't get relatively easy on the first rep. Right. You know what I mean? Because, if, like I said, if I can pick it up, I can do reps with it. And you were asking, that's mostly because I've always done touch-and-go reps. So, you know, I don't have as much power as someone who always does singles, but I have a lot of strength. You know what I mean? Right. So as my power rises from doing singles, the strength works with it, and then it ends up being something pretty impressive. I mean, it, it seems to work pretty well because it's built up my deadlifting muscles a lot from doing reps and touch and go like that. Um, I do a lot of assistance work for back. Not that much for legs. So yeah. deadlifts primarily are what I'm doing for hamstrings and quads and stuff too. Right, it's just annihilating everything. Mm -hmm. So I, I found that to be like pretty key because a lot of people will do a lot of, I do a lot of assistance work too, but a lot of people will do a lot of assistance work like on top of their deadlifts and stuff, and that isn't always necessarily needed if you push deadlifts hard enough. Right. I don't mean to necessarily do like six sets, but you can do one set really hard and get results from yeah. it, especially if you do other shit afterwards. So, All right, guys. Uh, that's uh, some deadlifting tips and some tips in general from the strongest deadlifter in the history of America, George Lehman, the Baby Slayer.